no nation which expects to be the leader of other nations can expect to stay behind in this race for space. Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and remember that we have Academy-themed gear in the Academy Store. Today, I might make a few people angry, and that's okay. The only way to never make anyone angry is to never have an opinion. It is my opinion that competition is vital to any industry, including the space industry, and right now, the orbital launch market is not competitive enough. 20 years ago, SpaceX was one year old, having been founded in 2002. Blue Origin was three years old. In 2003, there were 63 total orbital launches worldwide, with 60 of those being successful flights. 23 of those were American rockets. The companies launching these were Boeing, with nine Delta II and Delta IV launches, International Launch Services with five Atlas launches, Lockheed Martin with four Titan launches, Orbital Sciences with four Pegasus launches, and STS-107. This was the flight where the shuttle Columbia was destroyed on re-entry. That same year, Russia launched 21 rockets, Soyuz and Protons, China 7, Europe 4, Japan 3, Ukraine 3, India 2, and Brazil 1. That was 2003. On March 21st of 2023, it was reported that SpaceX CEO Elon Musk stated that his company would deliver 80% of the Earth's cargo by mass to orbit for this year. This is an amazing change from a few decades ago. Boeing and Lockheed Martin became United Launch Alliance and used up all their Russian rocket engines and are now just waiting on Blue Origin, which might allow Vulcan to fly by the end of this year. Otherwise, they are out of luck. Roscosmos seems to be on its last legs, using technology from the 60s and possibly losing control of the Baikonur launch complex. Europe is mired in bureaucratic inefficiency, leaving SpaceX to dominate the industry. But besides relativity space, that might someday be able to compete with the SpaceX Falcon 9 using Terran R. The only real hope is the Rocket Lab Neutron rocket. This rocket will have a fully reusable first stage with an enclosed second stage that, like the Falcon 9, is not reusable. The Neutron is right now planned to have a mass of 480 metric tons. It is 43 meters tall and 7 meters wide at the base, with a 5 meter wide fairing. This makes it significantly wider than the Falcon 9, which is very tall and slender. Propelled by liquid methane and oxygen, and reusing the first stage, it will be able to get 13 metric tons to low Earth orbit, and up to 1.5 metric tons to the Moon, Mars, or Venus. This will compete directly with the SpaceX Falcon 9, which has a total mass of 549 metric tons, is 70 meters tall and 3.7 meters wide, and can get 17.4 metric tons to low Earth orbit. Almost 90% of all satellites launched to orbit today have a mass of 13,000 kilograms or less. The next factor to consider is cost. Right now, SpaceX charges $62 million to launch a Falcon 9 if they land the booster for reuse. Rocket Lab is targeting $50 million per flight for the Neutron. This should make the Neutron rocket a competitive contender. Now let's see what Rocket Lab has been up to in their own words. We might have started with launch, but there's more than just rockets in this lab now. With Electron, we set out to open access to space, pioneering new technologies and rewriting the rocket development rulebook. We knew there was a better way to get small satellites to orbit faster and on their terms, and we succeeded. Now, we're doing the same for space systems, 
developing complete spacecraft and their vital subsystems. You see, space doesn't actually have to be hard. In fact, we've made it really easy. We've streamlined satellite design, manufacturing, launch, and on-orbit management together as a complete mission solution, enabling some of the world's most ambitious scientific missions. Supporting critical defense capabilities, pushing the boundaries of exploration, empowering commercial innovations that serve people and planet. And we're doing it at scale. With a dedicated and experienced team of more than 1,300 people and acres of manufacturing and test facilities across three countries and five states. Featuring state-of-the-art spacecraft cleanroom and processing facilities, automated manufacturing and 3D printing capability, precision machining capability, comprehensive spacecraft test and analysis facilities, the world's largest production line of high-performing space solar power products, five mission operation centers for on-orbit spacecraft management, and of course, three dedicated launch pads providing the gateway to space. This capability isn't a future aspiration. We're delivering real spacecraft to real customers today. From complex missions to the moon, to the solar cells powering mega constellations, to the reaction wheels providing precision pointing, and the flight software that commands it all, we're making missions possible. In fact, more than 38% of globally addressable launches in 2021 had spacecraft on them featuring technology created by Rocket Lab companies. So even if it's not launched on Electron, if it's in space, there's a good chance it has a Rocket Lab logo. Rocket Lab. More than just rockets in this lab. And let's take another look at the Archimedes engine that will power the Neutron rocket into space. The Neutron was originally planned to have seven engines, like the new Glenn, but this has changed. It will now have nine engines, probably to make a controlled landing easier. The Neutron will be using the Archimedes rocket engine. Archimedes is a methane and liquid oxygen powered rocket engine. It was first designed to use an open cycle gas generator. The Archimedes engine is designed to produce 730 kilonewtons which is much less than the BE-4, which is designed to produce 2,400 kilonewtons, or the SpaceX Raptor 2, which can already produce 2,300 kilonewtons. But the Neutron rocket is much smaller than the Starship. The Neutron is betting on being dependable, reusable, and affordable. Rocket Lab's goal is not to push the envelope on power like the BE-4 and combustion chamber pressure like the Raptor, but to design the Archimedes rocket engine so everything will run in a comfortable range. Not putting too much stress on any one component. But after an analysis of the planned open gas generator cycle for the Archimedes, Rocket Lab has changed their minds. They are now going to make the Archimedes a closed cycle, single oxygen rich preburner staged combustion engine, almost exactly like the BE-4. How can they hope to succeed at this when Blue Origin, with all of its resources, has failed for one thing, I believe that Rocket Lab is one of the most innovative space companies on the planet, perhaps even someday surpassing SpaceX. Rocket Lab started with the Electron rocket system, getting up to 300 kilograms to low Earth orbit. They now want to get into the extra heavy satellite market, which is anything over 7,000 kilograms. Secondly, the Archimedes is much smaller than the BE-4. Here you see the BE-4 from Blue Origin's website next to a human being. The average human is about 1.75 meters tall, which is 5 foot 9 inches. That would make the BE-4 about 4.4 meters or about 14 and a half feet tall. This is bigger than the Raptor, which is about 3.1 meters or 10 feet tall. Here you can see the Archimedes rocket engine, next to Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck, who looks to me to be an average height man. If Beck is about 1.75 meters tall, that would put this rocket engine at about 2.4 meters by my estimation. This is much smaller than the BE-4, and a little more than three-fourths the height of the Raptor. Again, the Archimedes will be down-tuned somewhat, 
so it does not work too hard to produce its 730 kilonewtons of thrust. It can throttle down to 50%, about the same as the BE-4, and should have a sea level specific impulse of 329 seconds in this configuration, about the same as a Raptor, and a vacuum specific impulse of 367 seconds, a little less than what's estimated for the Vacuum Raptor version. The engine is planned to be built in Virginia and will be tested at the Stennis Test Stand in Mississippi. Pre-burner testing will begin next year, with full engine testing planned before the end of 2023 and a possible launch in 2024. Rocket Lab has proven to be a very capable and innovative company, but then so is Relativity Space, and the success of the Terran 1 booster gives me hope for the Terran R, which would also compete directly with the SpaceX Falcon 9. If all goes well, we will have at least three independent and innovative American rocket companies competing for our space dollars and thereby helping to make humanity's advance into space possible. The best thing after that would be for some other country to compete with America to keep us on our toes. Something to think about. Thanks for listening, and stay safe. At Astro Proterra.